You are not born as a leader. You're chosen to be made one by God. Be excellent. Be simple. Be authentic. Be a leader. You must choose your life journey. Experience a God who's for you. Welcome to our Leadership Lifter. I'm David Blunt. I'm so glad you could join us today. Really appreciate it. You know, our Leadership Lifter podcast is all about lifting your leadership, helping you to go to the next level. And you know, from time to time, we have very special guests with us. I'm very excited about our guest today, Isaac Bruce, Hall of Famer, wide receiver, St. Louis Rams. And we're so excited to have him today. I know it's going to be life-changing. So would you welcome with me, Isaac Bruce. Isaac, welcome. Pastor Blunt, thanks for having me. We're so glad you yes, could sir. be with us on our podcast. Yes, sir. You know, Isaac, there's a whole lot of questions I could ask you, but um, uh, this is all about going to the next level, how to be a champion. Uh, it's all about what is success. You know, I, 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 I've heard you say in a lot of interviews, I, I heard you being interviewed one time, and they said, you know, Isaac, what do you want to be remembered for? Do you remember that? Yeah. And you remember what you said? I think I do remember what you I said, said. I want to be remembered for a man of integrity okay. and character. Yeah. You know, I think the interviewer wanted you to say football, yeah. acclimates, all that you yeah. did. I think he kind of blew him away because yeah. he kind of got real quiet. What does that mean? You know, if you more than anything else, you want to be remembered for integrity and character. Well, for me, uh, integrity, character is, you know, it's what precedes you before people have an opportunity to actually shake your hand or give you a pound, those things. I think they, they are very important because um, they start to create imagery in the minds of others. And it's important uh, what you see and what you call yourself, uh, because based on that, wow. it's it's what others will perceive you to be. So I felt like those, those characteristics are very important. Um, I think they're in us. Uh, at times, they need to be developed. And once we start to focus on the development uh, of those, um, it not, not only benefits ourselves, but it benefits the people that we're around. Wow. Yeah. So, so how would you define character, and how do you develop character? Well, character to me is character and, and integrity is, is, is doing what's right uh, because it's right. And especially when no one's looking. Hmm. So um, I, I think we, we get a lot of uh, our, I say, godly character from uh, reading the word. I think the word is and is always the foundation of building us up, uh, uh, convincing us that we are what God calls us and we can be what he uh, designed us to be. And we can do what he instructs us to do. So um, just that, that those character issues, being able to uh, have them developed on the inside, um, they work best when we're faced with adversity. Wow. Um, they, they, they grow when we're first with, faced with adversity. They're strengthened when we're fa faced with adversity. So um, those are things that we need. We're, we're being schooled and, and mentored uh, in, in, a, in a wilderness, so to speak, to go out and bring back some food. So what do you tell, what do you tell entrepreneurs and yeah. leaders that maybe are going through the toughest season of their life and they're facing challenges and adversity? What would you tell them today? I, I would say those are the times where you have to intentionally be intentional. Wow. You have to smile. You have to uh, force yourself to call those things which be not as though they were. You have to engage in uh, conversations and uh, people that have like mindsets as you or better or stronger, because that's, it, that's ultimately what's going to pull you through, uh, get you to the next level. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's another chapter that goes into your book and, and it's a memorial that reminds you of, of God's goodness and his, uh, his faithfulness. That is awesome. You know, Isaac, I watched the other day, again, your Hall of Fame speech yeah. when you lost your—they took your iPad away or somebody <laughs> yeah. took your <laughs> iPad away. And, you know, it was awesome, you know, because, you know, you started off and you gave God the glory. Yeah. And you gave Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior right. honor. And I loved it. Then you gave your parents— 
You talk about honor, integrity, priorities, you know, then your family, then your coaches and all this and the other. So when did you become a Christian, a Christ follower? When did you give your life to Christ? Well, Are you looking uh, for some favorite. interactive activities and special events that will help build your leadership and mentoring skills? Or maybe you're just looking for a place where you can network and promote your business. I encourage you, join us at our Marketplace Ministry events. You can visit our website for our upcoming dates and speakers. Well, uh, my parents were believers in Christ. They believe uh, that uh, you train a child in the way he should go, and when he's older, he won't depart from it. Uh, 14 brothers and sisters. So at a very young age, 12 years old, uh, I remember the month, November, I became, I became a believer uh, in a small church, Springs of Living Water in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And uh, over the time, you know, uh, it, it, it's amazing because sometimes we get distracted we get pulled away but you know the the truth about being trained by parents by godly parents it pulls us right back and that's exactly what happened to me i was pulled back into uh my training the training that my parents gave me and uh had a hunger had a thirst wow. and uh that that the, the spirit of the lord was poured upon me i started getting in his word uh you know started really committing myself to uh, being changed, uh, allowing God to grow me, uh, challenge me in certain ways. And, and uh, it's been an amazing journey, and it's still happening to this day. So parents, yeah. your mom and your dad, yeah. wow. So parents' responsibility, train up a child in the way they should go, yeah. not could go, should, should go. go. That's right. And when they're old, they will not depart. So what do you? What would you say right now to parents? You know what's going on in our country, our nation right now with the yeah. gender, the gender stuff, and and finding who am I and identification. What would you say to parents right now that are kind of struggling with their children, that they might be going through struggling with that, you know, in the school systems and with their peers? What would you say to those parents? It's funny. I have children, so I would say to them uh, or advise them to say what I say to my children and where do I get the words that I say to my children? I get it from my Bible. Um, Isaiah 44 talks about the spirit uh, of the Lord being poured out uh, on your children and the blessing of the Lord being poured out on your children. And then after that, he says that your children shall thrive like watered grass, Wow! Uh, like willows planted by uh, the riverbank. So those are the truths that I choose to believe and choose to say and pray over my children. Mm -hmm. And when I see anything contrary, you know, that's when that's when my fight, my fortitude, my 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 courageous attitude kicks in to to not be moved by what's going on or what I see, wow. but to, just to remain uh, steadfast, steadfast in what God says and what He has has said. And uh, that's what I would tell parents out out. out in the world today, you know, trust God. He's faithful. Trust His Word. Mm. His Word is true, uh, and His and His Word never fails. It it never, it never, a double negative here. It never not <laughs> produces, yeah. you know, an effect. Or uh, it's always fruitful. Yeah. So parents, <clears throat> they have the responsibility to be in the Word. Oh yeah. You know, at our church, uh, Isaac, this year, we, we go through the one-year Bible together yeah. as a church, the one-year Bible, and which has Old Testament, New Testament, Proverbs, and Psalm. And we say that as we do that, as families, we'll be stronger. As we do that, as a church, yeah. we'll be stronger. So it's the parents' responsibility to be in the Word yeah. and then pass that Word on down to their children. Yeah. Is that right? Absolutely. I think as parents, um, our, one of our first titles is being a parent, uh, a parent sometimes your children are not going to always be happy with <laughs> yeah. the decisions that you make for them. Uh, you know, then probably later on down in life, we can start to be friends. But at that moment in the training process, those moments, um, everybody's not going to be happy. Uh, wow. There are times uh, as a father, uh, I'm not happy uh, with some of the decisions that my children are making, but I'm also steadfast. I'm also still there. I'm also encouraged when I do see progress and I make sure I reward those those times <laughs> I do see progress. So it's fulfilling, it's challenging at the same time, um, but I feel like that we've been equipped to win. I mean, mm. I, we, we, you don't ever stop being a winner. Um, you just have moments of, you know, maybe the clock runs out on you, but 
there's always more time. We keep we 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 keep time in its place. Place yeah. time is just like a tree. You know, God created trees and gave you dominion over it, yeah. just like time. He gave us dominion over time. Well, so that's good. Yeah. Keep growing your skills with Pastor David Blunt's weekly leadership lifter. On our website, you will find more uplifting teachings, book recommendations, and other lecture materials that will bring fulfillment to your life. Also, on the website, you can purchase Pastor Blunt's books, as well as his upcoming release, God is for You. So, so what would you say then are the characteristics of a godly man? When we say godly man, what are the characteristics that comes to your mind? Yeah. First and foremost, a godly man is a man that points to Jesus at all times. Wow. I mean, you just point to Jesus. Uh, you get your instructions from him. Uh, you're, he's your example. Uh, you, we imitate him. Uh, we, we, we make sure that we spend time with him. We have a relationship with him. Uh, we allow him to lead us mm -hmm. in every decision. We, we pray his blessings over our decision making. Uh, we speak his word. Uh, we should we should look just like Jesus. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, with with the way we speak, the words that we use, you know, you know, people should have to rub their eyes, you know, when we talk, and uh, they should have to rub their eyes when they see the results of wow. what we speak as well. Wow, yeah. you know, um, along with all that that God has had you do through football, yeah. but you know now. You're an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You and your wife are entrepreneurs. You're leaders. You lead. You guide. You whatever. So, talking to our entrepreneurs out there, several people have their own business or starting up a business or struggling in their business or whatever. Yeah. Can you be godly today and be an entrepreneur and be successful and thrive in this recession, inflation, or where we're going? With it? Can you really not bend, not bow, and be godly yeah. and be a successful entrepreneur? I believe you can. There's so many examples in the Bible. I mean, the first one comes to, to my mind is, is Joseph. Uh, we see what Joseph did in, in Egypt. Uh, he never bowed. Uh, he never got outside of the, the will of God, but he trusted God. Even in times that seemed bad for him, they were really uh, an opportunity for him to be promoted. Uh, we see what he did with the economy of Egypt, uh, saving, preserving, mm. uh, purchasing land. Uh, he, he depended on God's hand, his favor uh, to bring in those things. God's I mean, it, it, you know, I think about scripture in, in, in Psalms 41, Psalms 44, it said that we got not the land by our own sword, <laughs> yeah. but it was the hand of the Lord. It was the countenance of the Lord because he favored us. So when we trust in God's favor, favor defeats our enemies, uh, favor open doors for me, favor the favor of God on your life will not allow your enemy to triumph over you. So even in, a, in the business arena, I mean, we go in with those truths. Those truths become our mindset. They're, they're the words that we practice. Mm -hmm. And we speak over our businesses, over our employees. And, uh, you know, we're not, we're not uh, ashamed to call things that be not as though they were. We, we call money into it. I mean, um, it belongs to us. Uh, it's our inheritance. The Bible calls Jesus our inheritance. He calls them our portion, and uh, we have a right to those things. So, But being purposeful-minded with your businesses, with your family, mm -hmm. that they're just not ours, but they're there to be a blessing to others. Wow. And uh, we use those things, and we're not used by them. That's so good. I love, Isaac, everything I ask you a question, you say, but what does the word say? <laughs> I love it. It's the foundation. It's so so, Isaac, uh, you know, again, to our, speaking to our entrepreneurs, you as an entrepreneur, do you ever deal with budget, employees, uh, you know, employees not doing what they're supposed to do, yes. struggling, you know, with uh, the budgeting and, and all the things, the vendors, whatever. How do you deal, you know, how, do you have that and how do you deal with it? We do. We face uh, budgeting issues. We face uh, employee issues, hiring, uh, firings. Uh, people that uh, are in position for promotion or people who want to open their own franchises. My wife and I, we own uh, seven ice cream stores, Smoosh, Smoosh Ice Cream. Oh, it's the are ultimate they? ice cream sandwich. I love it. Where are they, so people here? Our, our ice cream stores are currently in Houston, Texas. Uh, we're in College Station, Texas. Uh, we're in South Florida, Plantation, Florida. 
and we're having a grand opening here soon in Canton, Ohio. That's awesome. Uh, on the Hall of Fame vil Village. So, um, <laughs> that's awesome. We're, we're, we're selling ice cream. Yeah, Bond, I love it. You know, but um, yeah, we face all those things. And, um, you know, I thank God for having a, uh, a wife who's mm. also uh, an engineer, very smart, uh, very business savvy. Uh, she's very hands on with what we do as far as the ice cream is concerned. And, you know, I play, I pray God's blessing on her daily, Look at you know, that. Uh, give her the wisdom, the knowledge yes. to be out in front of situations, be out in front of circumstances. And, and, uh, he's blessing everything that we put our hands to right Look now. At that. You talked about the favor of God setting uh, Joseph apart, sets yeah. us apart. So Isaac, how do we get the favor of God on our life, family, business? How do we get God's favor? Well, we, we believe the finished work of Christ. Uh, we believe uh, that we belong to God Almighty. Mm -hmm. We believe that uh, we are in his hand. We believe that uh, through uh, the cross of Christ that uh, his favor belongs to us now. It belongs to uh, us. The Bible says that, you know, God turned his face away from Jesus on the cross, and now he turns his countenance upon us. So therefore, you know, the favor of God belongs to us. And and um, it's, it's nothing that we have to do. We don't have to tap dance like I used to say. Uh -huh. um, but we just receive. You, we yeah. receive that faith. We claim it and receive we, it. We claim it, we receive <laughs> it, and we expect it. And you expect it. Yes, sir. Whoa. Yes, sir. Whoa. So, Isaac, we hit a little bit about, uh, you know, uh, leadership and, and a little bit about family and parenting and this, that, and the other. Uh, let's talk about football for a little bit, okay? okay? So, so a lot of people... There, there, there are a lot of people that get credit for uh, the football success that I've had on the field and off the field. You know, my, my early days of football uh, in South Florida, um, you know, if basketball is king in Indiana, yeah. football is king in South Florida. I mean, it's, it's just what we do. And fortunately, we can play all year round. We have no breaks. We can go out <laughs> yeah. and there's no snow on the ground yeah. where we can't play but we have those opportunities. And I grew up watching my older brothers play. Um, they played organized football. I would go to their practices. I watched them perform. Uh, one brother in particular, he was a part of my uh, Hall of Fame induction ceremony, Samuel Bruce. Mm -hmm. Samuel, mm -hmm. I grew up really watching him. And I, I would hear his name being called uh, from the PA system for making plays on the field. And um, I, I think I wanted that as well. Um, but and, and I seen him make significant plays. So I would see him get dressed for practice. I would see him uh, uh, do conditioning. I would see him do his push-ups, his sit-ups, everything that, you know, was conducive for him to be a great football player. I was always around it. And I, when the moment I got my opportunity to play organized football, uh, I jumped on it. My mom, she jumped right into it. And I loved the game from that moment. I grew up a huge Miami Dolphin fan. Uh, Dan Marino yeah. fan, that was my guy. Yeah. Uh, Mark Clayton, Mark Duper, and just just to be able to watch those guys perform at a high level wow. and really see what they could do, um, I, I started falling in love with the game, and that took me from uh, just playing in little league football to wanting to play in high school. And from high school, having a desire to go to college and play in college, ended up at University of Memphis playing football there. Yeah and uh, got drafted by the Los Angeles Rams two years after that, mm -hmm. moved to St. Louis, mm -hmm. uh, played a, a brand and a great stretch, a term of football that, you know, some call some of the greatest football that's ever mm -hmm. been played mm -hmm. ever mm -hmm. uh, in the history of the league. And, you know, I developed friends and friendships and relationships, uh, you know, through every step. But uh, football's always been there for me. And, I, you know, I like to tell other people, I believe God placed us, yeah. placed me in this industry for yeah. a reason. Wow. Number one, to play football at a very high level. Number two, when you're done, not just to retire, because I don't believe the word retire is in the kingdom. Amen. You know, you go and do something different. So, you know, he expands us. So, so what's, what's the top spot as far as uh, professional football is concerned? NFL ownership. So that's what I talk. I, t I say a lot. My dreams are bigger than my memories. I love it. And that's one of my dreams. And uh, it's so big that I can't do it, but it's so big that only God can do it. So that's what, uh, that's what my dreams and my football, me being in this industry is all about. So, so I hear you talk about uh, mentors. 
Yeah. You know, we have to have oh, yeah. mentors to go to the next to. level. I hear you talk about role models. We have to have role models yes. to go to the next level. I hear you talk about pictures. You saw them. Yes. Vision. You saw them. That's powerful, isn't it? Oh, because absolutely. you really can't go, we can't be our best to go to the next level without a vision. Absolutely. Without a dream. That's right. Without mentors, coaching. And I hear you saying all of that. Yes. You know, so it took all that together. And I heard someone ask you one time, what's the key to success? And you said, you know, dream big. That's right. And then walk out your journey. That's right. What is that, you know, as we get ready to close, Isaac, and we could go all day with this, but you've got another speaking engagement. Yeah. But when you say something, dream big and walk out your journey, make that epical. What's that look like? Big dreams. Uh you know, it, it was so easy to activate our imagination as children. Yeah. It was, it, was, it was like the back of our hands or just walking into, you know, ice cream store, getting ice cream cone. It was, it was easy as that. So I think somewhere down the line, we allowed someone to talk us out of using our imagination. Wow. Or if they didn't talk us out of it, we, we made it negative. We allowed it to just get clouded with these dark thoughts and these thoughts these dark uh, imaginations or dreams that we put in there, allowed to go in there. So I felt like God gave us an imagination for a reason. And, and if you look at it, if you watch and look at the word, mm. God has an imagination. Yeah, You know, he, he created us in his image, gave us an imagination. And we you can use that imagination to take us from where we are to that next level. And that never stops. It only that. stops when we stop. So... Um, age doesn't matter. Uh, gender doesn't matter. I love that. Uh, you know, where you currently are in life right now, that doesn't matter. I think the power of that imagination and a positive mm. imagination can take us to, you know, what one of my buddies, Aeneas Williams says, we can die empty or we can empty out and see the return of the Lord at the same time. So yeah. I think that's a that's an ability that and a gift that God has given us that we have to use, particularly in this day and time. It's important. How do you feed that? Because it's so negative out yeah. there today. How do you feed that uh, imagination? How do you feed it? I think that's one of the easiest things to do uh, is to feed your imagination. Um, I heard one person say, uh, good things in, good things out. So trash in, trash <laughs> out. Uh, we, we focus on uh, reading things to make our souls happy first. So good. Um, and, so good. And what other what other source other than the Bible? You know, you can read those stories in there. They are triumphant stories of yeah. David, triumphant stories Esther. Uh, you have Ruth. Uh, you have the Israelites coming out of Egypt. They're, those are triumphant stories that we can use uh, and 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 place them in our imagination. So when we get in a situation. We can say, hmm, okay, what did Samson do? Samson trusted God. He, he put his trust wholly in God to deliver him from his enemy. Yeah. And we see him delivered. Or we, we see other people who are in, in situations in the Bible that we just mimic what we see or what's been written in the Bible. That feeds our imagination. There you go. That's yeah. so good. Well, Isaac, thank yeah. you so much for being on our Leadership Lifter Appreciate podcast. It, and if people want to follow you or do on social media yeah. or anything, do you have any way they can follow you? I do. I have a Twitter account, Isaac80. Uh, that's my Twitter handle. Uh, they can go to <laughs> Isaac Bruce Foundation on Facebook. And Tiffany's not here, so I, I need her help. Facebook and Instagram, <laughs> yeah. Isaac Bruce. Dot org is our website for the foundation. Flight 300 is our program. That's, that's awesome. my baby. And uh, uh, that's how you can find out about what's that's happening awesome. with me. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, I've, one more thing. I think you need to start an ice cream shop in St. Louis. I think so, too. <laughs> I think so. I really okay. think so, too. I Thank was thinking you, about that. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We just appreciate it so much, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.